Welcome to the fourth part of this game making tutorial. In this part, we'll be starting with graphics, the cool stuff. Remember, we're uh, we're coding a game from scratch, so there are no shortcuts. So everything has to be learned <laughs> from the bottom, bottom and up. So let's start off by making text, shouldn't we? I'm gonna learn you this right now. If you are having trouble with any functions or want to find out if any function exists, please go to the wiki on love2d.org. I'll post the link in the description. Here you will have uh, all the functions listed up uh, depending on their module, like graphics, you get the graphics functions, the keyboard functions, uh, everything. So. Let's go ahead with graphics and we'll start off by making some text, shouldn't we? Yeah, I think we should. So, uh, it's print, yeah. It's the print function. So, let's go ahead and copy this function. Notice that every single value here, uh, or condition, is uh, an argument, that's the proper name for it, is uh, already listed down here under the function, telling what it does. So, string. The text, the text uh, argument needs to be a string that uh, that tells the, the engine what text to write, what letters to use. And the x is the x position, y position. Uh, this is the yeah, orientation. If you want to have an angle on the text, uh, and then the scale. We'll yeah. So let's go ahead. Let's just copy pasta that function right in. Love graphics dot print and all the arguments. So let's go ahead and try to write uh, uh, hello world, why not? And I try to use uh, numbers that are in power of 2. So I uh, yeah, let's use 32 times 32. That's going to uh, since we're putting this position in, the text is going to appear in the top left corner since the zero 0 0.0 position is in the very top corner. We do not want an angle on the text and uh, the scale should be 1. 1. So, let's see what happened. One problem though, we need to add colors too. The engine doesn't know what color to use. It would have just uh, chosen a, a default color like white or black. But that's not legit. So, let's go back and find the proper function to use. Um, I think it's set color. Yes, it is set color. Copy that. And here's what we went through in the previous tutorial. So, yeah. Let's paste that. And this is important. Since the engine works down from the top of the function, it has to set the color before we print the text. Thus, we cannot put this set color function after the text if we want to set a new color on the text. It has to be before the print function. And we want this text to be black because our background color is white. That's obvious. So, 0, 0, 0. And alpha here is the transparency of the text. And we want it to be totally visible to the maximum extreme. So, 2, 5, 5. Now, let's try it. Yeah, hello world, it says. Oh, we're making uh, we're making progress here. We're getting the game. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a basic drawing for you. Let's start with some boxes and I'll show you the draw order of the engine. Let's print some boxes and how do we print boxes, you ask? Well, love graphics. And rectangle. Yes, we want a rectangle. Swip, copy, and let's just print it over this text. The mode here is a funny one. You can choose between two modes, either line or fill. I can show you both of them. Let's start with line. Have the same position as the last time. Height, 128. No, width and 64 height. There we go. 
So here we have a box with a line around it, nothing inside it. So if we choose to fill it instead, it goes like this. Shubing. Let's make another box over that one again. If we put the, ne the second box after the first box, it will draw over the black box. Notice, let's make this one red and let's shuffle it 32 more uh, positions to the right and down. Let's see what happens now. There we go. The red box is, has been drawn over the black box. And that, this is because it has been set in the function under the black box. So black box is being drawn first and then it goes over to setting the color to red then it draws the red box. So if we want to have a box behind the black box let's say a... I think this is blue, red, green, blue and let's make it 16. 16. I, uh, you should really be playing around with these uh, options just to understand the functions. So here you go. First blue box, then black box, then red box. The reason why I'm putting these lines together, the color and the rectangle, is because it looks better. The engine does not care how you, <laughs> if, where the spaces are. It does only care about the functions. So I could have chosen to put it like this and it will be the same code, notice. Same thing happens. If I choose to divide it here, same thing happens. So only the functions matter. Oh, of course, and the variables and all the things you have to set. But that's for later. Also, if I didn't say so, you have to put love those graphic functions functions, at least the ones that draw things in the love draw function. Uh, people are probably going to comment me on that, but uh, yeah, comment on that, but uh, let's just say that that's the case. Okay, and um, let's let's um, let's do something more advanced. Let's make the box follow our mouse, should we? Then we... Ah, we don't need to open this really, not now. Let's, uh, let's make the... let's call it a cursor or whatever. Let's make it black, all black. It shouldn't be too large, maybe 32 wide, 32 high. And... The position can't be fixed, it has to move after the mouse, right? So, we need to find out where the mouse is at a set time, so let's go down here, mouse, love that mouse, and get x and get y, we need both of those, so there we go, just copy that, and we need to declare some variables, local x equals the x position of the mouse. The reason why I put local here is because I won't be able to read the x value in other functions. If I am to, for example, to print x here now, it won't work because it's local inside this function. It will no, no one will be able to access the x, this exact x value in uh, outside of this function. If I have, however, were to declare it in this function too as a local. Uh, these two x's w wouldn't be the same x, but they would still display the same value, of course. Local just uh, localizes the value for a set uh, function or nest, as it's called. You'll see examples on that later. Hard to understand, or maybe not. Depends. Y and the y position. So. Uh, since we want the rectangle to move after the, the positions of the mouse, we just plot them in here. Oop to do. There we go. Let's just exit the old. There we go. And here we go. The box is now moving after the mouse. With some lag, of course. But that can be fixed with V-Sync and, and other cramp like that. So, let's... Um, 
I don't want to have the box appear in the left corner. Like the left top corner there. Where the mouse is. I want it, the mouse to be in the middle of the box. And then we need to offset this box a little. We need to subtract half of its size from the X value. I hope you understand this. <laughs> and here we go. Now the black box is in the middle of the mouse. You'll pick up this as you go and make your own games. I guess we'll conclude uh, this drawing session now and we'll see each other in the part 5. Auf Wiedersehen!